from the studios of Adventist World Radio in Pune. Hello and a very warm welcome to our international English service. In our program today, we bring you inspiring music and interesting nature study. With more music coming in, we shall end our program with a message from God's word. This is your host Sharad and I am Maureen and you are listening to Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope. Let's begin our program with a song.
are listening to Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope from Pune, India. And now, here's a nature study. Hello friends. Today we are going to talk about a famous person called Lewis and Clark. My name is Charbonio. The man in buckskins introduced himself to explorers Meriwether, Lewis and William Clark. I am a French Canadian, a trapper. The Indians told me about your expedition for the United States government. I have trapped in these parts for many years. Perhaps I could help you. I can speak most of the Indian languages in the area. Say that's great. Lewis exclaimed as he reached out his hand in welcome. We could use a translator. That's my wife, Saka Gavya. Charbonio motioned to a young Indian girl who sat shyly to one side rocking her baby. She was stolen from the Shoshon by a hostile tribe. I purchased her from them to be my wife. She could help me with cooking. She can help with more than cooking, Clark responded. Turning to Sakagavya, he said, I hear the Shoshans have many horses. Yes, sir, she nodded, her eyes brightening. They have beautiful horses. We need to buy some horses, Lewis continued. Could you lead us to the village of your people? I will try, Sakagavya promised. When spring came, she led them deep into the rocky mountain wilderness to the home of her tribe. Would her loved ones be alive or dead? When Sakagavya saw a certain young Indian chief, she ran forward weeping. You are my brother, she cried, throwing her arms around his neck. What a reunion! What joy! How good to see him after so many years! There will be lots of reunions like that in heaven. Children whose mothers died will see them again. Wives who have lost their husbands will rush into their arms. Brothers and sisters will meet once more. Grandmas and grandpas will be restored to their families. Oh, what a reunion that will be! So, dear listeners, loved ones will never have to part again. Jesus will wipe away all their tears. We will be with our families forever and nothing will ever make us sad again. Thank you for the nature study. We are sure our listeners enjoyed it. To learn more on nature, keep listening to Adventist World Radio. We will be studying different objects of nature because there is a simplicity and purity in these lessons direct from nature that makes them of the highest value. The children and youth, all classes of students, need the lessons to be derived from this source. In itself, the beauty of nature leads the soul away from sin and worldly attractions and toward purity, peace and God. Dear friend, death, struggle pain and violence were not part of God's original creation. Let's discover what was the world like when God created it. To know more on God's word, you could also write to us. Here's our mailing address. Adventist World Radio, Post Box No. 17 Pune 411001, Maharashtra, India. You could also email us on Adventist Media Center at gmail.com You may also follow our programs on our website awr.org slash English program Before you hear God's word here's another song It's a really good night to be praising your name This place is so full of your life And I thank you for sisters and brothers like these And the song that we're singing tonight It's your song, Lord. You created the gift that we bring. It's your song, Lord. You created music so we could sing. So we will send the melody right back around and make a perfect circle with the sound. We love to lift our voices, Lord, 'cause every time we do, we're singing. 
strong And we're longing to tell you and praise you again So thank you for sending the song Cause it's your song, Lord You created the gift that we bring It's your song, Lord You created music so we could sing So we'll send the melody right back around And make a perfect circle with the sound We love to lift our voices, Lord Cause every time we do We're singing your song for you In the tune of the raindrops And the song of the wind All music begins in your heart When we lift a song, we're just sending Time to hear God's word. God's gift to man. Dear listener, today we are going to talk about God's gift to man. In the beginning, God made man perfect and also made for him a perfect home in which to dwell. The Garden of Eden was all that the heart would desire. Beauty and fragrance prevailed everywhere. All the animals were tame and friendly. In the midst of the garden was the tree of life, so situated that it was easily accessible. As long as man partook of it, he would live and be free from death. As man multiplied upon the earth, Adam would be the logical king, and Eden the capital city. The inhabitants of the earth would make pilgrimages to the garden to partake of the tree of life which bore its fruit monthly. Naturally, they would all be glad to meet Father Adam as he would be the most important man on the earth. Dear listener, in addition to his earthly position and uh, popularity, would be the direct representation of this earth in the councils of heaven. Being the Son of God, Luke chapter 3, verse 38, he would be the member of the council of the sons of God, Job chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, and have his place in the regular meetings. What more exalted position would God give to man? Dear listener, the opportunities before Adam were unlimited. They were, however, all on condition of obedience. He was privileged to partake of all the trees in the garden except one, and only one. This tree God reserved for himself. It was called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Genesis chapter 2 verse 17. At first thought, this looks like a very peculiar name for a tree. But later on this strange name will be found most significant. Why did God forbid Adam and Eve to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? He certainly had some reason. Was the fruit poisonous? No, nothing was poisonous in Eden. Was it bitter and unfit for food? No, Nothing was bitter in Eden. It was the same quality as the other trees. But this tree was God's. To pluck food from it would be disobedience and sin. It was to be a continual reminder of God's ownership. 
God gave to man everything in this world except one tree which he reserved for himself. Surely man ought to have been content to leave that tree alone when he had access to the entire world. Eternal life was promised on condition of obedience. But God said, In the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Genesis chapter 2 verse 17 Dear listener, the tree was to test Adam's loyalty and obedience to God. He was given a choice. Would he or would he not leave it alone? On this decision hung his future destiny. God created Adam to be a free moral agent and gave him the power of choice. Man, dear listener, has this power even till today. If he did not, there would be no willing service to God. Man would serve God because he would do nothing else. This would be only a form of godliness and displeasing to the Lord God who desires only willing service. With Adam's future possibilities depending on his obedience to God, will he make the wrong choice? Will Adam risk losing all to obtain the fruit of only one more tree? This is a question he had to decide. Dear listener, today there is a similar test, not in the form of a tree, but of a dollar. Euro, pounds, rupees, dinars, shillings, and so on. Dear listener, God claims one-tenth of the net income, not because he needs it, but to be a continual reminder of his ownership and a test of loyalty and obedience to him. Will man be faithful to God and return to him his own? Will a man rob God? Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 This is a question to be decided. Will man risk eternal life by submitting to temptation and use that portion of his income which God claims as his own? Let us be honest with ourselves and with our God and use only that which actually belongs to us. Probably the greatest sin of the present age is covetousness. Dear listener, how does tithing affect my own finances? Malachi chapter 3 verses 8 and 10 says, Should people cheat God? Yet you have cheated me. But you ask, what do you mean? When did we ever cheat you? You have cheated me of the tithes and offerings due to me. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord Almighty, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Let me prove it to you. Dear listener, God promises to meet our needs far and above our gifts to Him. Tithing is God's mean for supplying a variety of needs for His people. As we fulfill His command to meet others' needs, He graciously meets and exceeds our own. Luke chapter 6 verse 38 says, If you give, you will receive. Your gifts will return to you in full measure, pressed down, shaken together, to make room for more and running over. Whatever measure you use in giving, large or small, it will be used to measure what is given back to you. Dear listener, if we give, God has promised to give us more than we can imagine. Those who trust this promise find that they always have what they need when they need it. May God bless you, dear listener, as you practice giving. Let's pray. Giver of all good things in life, our loving God, we come to you with thankful hearts for giving us gift of life. We want to thank you and praise you for health, 
and abundance of life. Lord, may we learn to give so that we can develop our character through giving. May through our giving, many may come to the throne of thy grace. Bless us as we learn to give, dear Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. What about you?
scriptures says, Your world is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. Psalms 119 verse 105. Indeed, my dear listener, what a treasure we have in God's word. The Holy Bible is relevant to today's issues and gives solid guidance for daily living. Happiness is to know the Savior living a life within His favor having a change in my behavior. Happiness is the Lord. Happiness is a new creation, Jesus and me in close relation having a part in His salvation. Happiness is the Lord. Real joy. I found the secret, it's Jesus in my heart, Jesus in my heart. Happiness seems to be forgiven, living a life that's worth a living, taking a trip that leads to heaven. Happiness seems the Lord, happiness is the Lord. With this, we have almost come to the end of our program. To learn more on God's Word, we would love to receive your letters on Adventist World Radio, Post Box Number 17, Pune 411-001, Maharashtra, India. You could also email us on Adventist Media Center at gmail.com. We invite you to follow our programs also on our website. That's AWR dot org slash english program this is your host sharad and i'm maureen signing off from adventist world radio do join us again along with your family and friends until we meet again via radio we wish you goodbye and god bless you 